Hello and welcome to our Career Essentials video called Should I PhD or Not? By the end of this video, you should have recognised the questions you have or aspects of doing a PhD you're feeling unsure about and be able to identify some practical steps to help you make an informed decision about whether a PhD is right for you. When considering a PhD, there's lots of factors to consider. The main one is to think about why you want to do a PhD. Don't do it just because you aren't sure what else to do. It's a big time investment, as well as possibly a financial one. But equally, it's also a lot of effort and hard work. So you need to be motivated and really want to get the most out of the opportunity. And that will be much more difficult if your heart's not in it. Also consider what you're aiming to get out of a PhD. Is this the first step on an academic career path or do you have other motivations that attract you to doing this? This will help you to identify some key questions you need to ask about PhD opportunities or enable you to focus on exploring whether you can achieve those aims outside of a PhD too. You need to consider what your research interests are too. Even if you're applying for a programme with rotations or taught courses at the beginning, you still need to have some ideas about what direction you might want to take your research in and some clarity on your research interests. When making an application for many PhDs, you'll need to be clear about how you've developed your particular research interest and you may even need to write a research proposal. You can't simply say it's interesting, you need to articulate why it's interesting for you and provide evidence you've engaged with the research prior to making an application. More importantly, are you able to see yourself focusing on that research interest for three or more years, depending on the course or programme that you do? It's a long period of time, so consider whether your research area will hold your attention, keep you motivated, and whether it's sufficiently challenging enough that you'll have the drive to see it through for the duration. A PhD is a marathon, not a sprint. Consider how a PhD fits with your longer term career aims as well. Do you definitely need a PhD for your future career and will it support you in, in moving into that chosen career? If you're completing a PhD with a view to a career outside of academia, you may need to consider whether you're able to establish links with industry or other organisations during your PhD whether you're able to develop research skills that are in demand in industry, or for other careers, are you able to develop the transferable skills and engage in activities during your PhD to support your ambitions, whether that's getting involved in outreach, public engagement, business and entrepreneurship activities, or whether you'll get the chance to complete an internship or some experience. Consider how you know it's the right next step for you. What have you done to inform that choice and what's the evidence it's a good step? Take a step back from the things that you've done and try to consider it objectively away from supervisor suggestions or considering the fact that it's what perhaps lots of other students in your subject area do. And don't forget, you'll need to consider whether you're able to fund a PhD not just the cost of tuition, but also the living costs alongside it. Explore the funding that's available for your subject area and consider whether you'll be a competitive applicant to secure it or meet the eligibility criteria. When you've considered some of these questions, you may come to one of several conclusions, that a PhD is the right option, that you want to do a PhD, but only in a particular area or a particular type of opportunity, or that it's not for you and you need to explore the alternatives. Any of these answers are totally okay. If you're still feeling unsure, then starting to think about your own personal reasons for doing a PhD and reasons to think carefully might help. Consider some of the points that resonate with you here. For example, if you want to immerse yourself in an element of your subject for three or more years in depth, Feel like you haven't learned everything you want to know and you're passionate about driving forward knowledge in the field. Maybe you've undertaken some research experience and know you enjoy the environment. 
and you have a clear idea of what you'd like to get out of a PhD, then it, it may be a sensible option, but that doesn't mean your research is over just yet. If you're considering a PhD because you're not sure what else to do, proceed with caution. A PhD takes lots of independent drive and motivation and you need to be passionate about the subject as you're going to be immersed in it for three or four years. You need to know why you're doing it, either career goals or personal motivations to keep yourself motivated through the good times and the more challenging periods too. So let's have a look at some practical steps to help you confirm or clarify your thoughts. Some of you might have done some of these activities already and it's a good time to step back and think about them carefully. But if you haven't, now's the time to identify what actions you might take. If you're a scientist, um, then you may consider undertaking some summer research experience. If you've done this already, consider what you learn about the academic research environment outside of your undergraduate course. Most of you will be undertaking some form of research project, dissertation or thesis. Reflecting on that experience can help you to identify whether a PhD is a suitable step for you and thinking about it as you're doing it can also be helpful. But be realistic, we've recently had a case of someone who found their project quite challenging and thought that doing a PhD would be different without the pressures of exams and the other elements of undergraduate study. But a year into their PhD, they looked back and realised that their experience of doing their project had actually been quite indicative of what a PhD would have been like. So don't ignore your gut instinct. Likewise, if you've done a dissertation or thesis as an arts, humanities or social sciences student, remember you've worked on that project for a few months. So consider how it might feel scaled up for at least three years solely focused on that research. Usually you'll be the one responsible for pushing the project forward and you'll probably be working very independently. So consider how you feel about that prospect. Do bear in mind, if a project hasn't gone well, it doesn't mean a PhD is the wrong thing for you. It may help you to identify the type of PhD, the research group or department, or the type of supervisor that may suit you best if you decide to proceed into postgraduate study. Talking to academics is a really helpful way of getting some more advice on whether a PhD is right for you. Don't assume your experience to date is reflective of spending three or four years on a PhD project. Talk to those who are doing it or who've done it recently, especially in the groups, departments or institutions you're interested in. But do remember, some people will only tell you the positives, some will regale you with everything that's gone wrong. So try to canvas a range of opinions and experiences. And it's quite normal to reach out to the groups or departments you're interested in before applying. So do try and speak to current PhD students as much as you can. And as we've mentioned, you'll need to develop your research interests. So try and engage with your research area as much as you can. Read papers in the field, attend lectures, and don't be afraid to speak to a lecturer who's delivered something interesting to ask how you can follow it up. You can watch videos on YouTube um, or lectures through iTunes University, listen to podcasts, and don't forget to get advice from supervisors as well. This is very similar to the super curricular activity you had to do for your Cambridge application. So you're going to con continue that now. You might also consider steps to explore where a PhD might take you in the longer term and explore the career areas you've got an interest in to see whether you need a PhD to get into them. And we'll have some further resources on this on the next slide. So if you're looking to explore this further, have a look at our further study pages on the Career Service website. You'll find a wealth of resources there, but also look at findaphd.com um, and their advice pages which will cover different types of PhD opportunities, studying in different countries, and lots of advice about funding. 
Um, you can use our GradLink database as well to explore the career options post PhD or also to look at particular careers you're interested in to find out whether a PhD is valuable. You can connect with our grad links and make contact with them if you've got questions and want to ask a little more. And most importantly, if you're really stuck and you need an impartial perspective or you're struggling to weigh up the decision, book in for an appointment with us in the careers service and we can have an impartial conversation to help you weigh up your options. But don't forget to speak to supervisors, academics, your director of studies and PhD students that you come across through your course as well. Their advice can be invaluable and they will always be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much for listening and I wish you all the very best with your next steps considering whether a PhD is right for you.